Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India on path of reform, transform and perform, PM Modi tells investors. World Bank slashes Pakistan's GDP growth projection by half. And Nepal observes National Unity Day with fervour. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said that India has been on a reform, transform and perform path since 2014 as he inaugurated the Global Investors Summit 2023 in central Madhya Pradesh state. The PM said that institutions that track the global economy have unprecedented confidence in India and the same optimism is also exuded by global investors. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday virtually inaugurated the Global Investors Summit 2023 in central Madhya Pradesh state and hailed the country's economic growth, saying that India has been on a reform, transform and perform path since 2014. The PM said that the International Monetary Fund sees India as a bright spot in the global economy and according to the World Bank, India is in a better position to deal with the global headwinds than many other countries. This is because of India's strong macroeconomic fundamentals, he added. This optimism for India is driven by strong democracy, young demography and political stability. Due to this, India is taking decisions that boost ease of living and ease of doing business. The two-day Global Investor Summit is being attended by trade and industries representatives from over 80 countries. Its key objectives are to showcase industrial ecosystem of Madhya Pradesh, formulate industry-friendly policies, promoting export potential and buyer-seller meets and vendor development. Indian capital New Delhi continued to be shrouded with a thick blanket of smog amid icy cold weather in the region. The condition is expected to worsen if the temperature witnesses further dip in coming days. A thick blanket of smog shrouded the Indian capital on Wednesday with residents already battling an icy cold wave, complaining of breathing difficulties due to the toxic air. The system of air quality and weather forecasting and research suffers said the overall air quality index was recorded at 421 under severe category. In view of the prevailing situation, the Delhi government has temporarily banned BS3 petrol and BS4 diesel light motor vehicles till Friday. Delhi NCR pura gas ka chamber ban chuka hai sir. Yahan ki hawa matlab itna zyada pollution hai, hawa itni kharab ho chuki hai ki bahut mushkil se matlab ye guzara karna padta hai sir yahan pe. Authorities have brought in several measures over the years to improve the city's air quality including switching Delhi's fleet of public transport to cleaner fuel, spraying water on roads and controlling the burning of firewood and waste. But experts have said these measures need to be applied across northern India and cities and towns around New Delhi to effectively control pollution. In news from Pakistan, opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan has revealed that his party had planned for resettlement of TTP militants in tribal areas of Pakistan. Addressing a seminar on resurgence of terrorism in Pakistan, Khan also criticized the statements of incumbent government over Afghanistan, adding if Kabul stops its cooperation, then the situation would aggravate. 
Pakistan's former premier and opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan on Tuesday revealed that his government had planned for resettlement of Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan or TTP militants in Pakistan's tribal areas with the help of the Afghan Taliban, but non-cooperation from provinces led to dropping of this plan. Khan, who was addressing a seminar on resurgence of terrorism in Pakistan, said that militants created by military dictator Zia ul Haq imposed war on Pakistan after dictator Parvez Musharraf took a U turn and sided with the US. He said fall of Ashraf Ghani's government provided Pakistan a golden opportunity to deal with TTP, but lack of funds and non cooperation didn't lead to anything significant. Khan lashed out at leaders of the coalition government over their statements against Afghanistan and said if Kabul stopped its cooperation, then the situation would aggravate to a never-ending war. We had a national security council meeting in the national security council to plan that we had extra funds on the FATA merger because it is very important because the war on terror is also the war on terror. But the other thing is that we had to pay money for the resettlement. ये जितने भी 30 से 40,000 या 45,000 लोग जो वापस आ रहे हैं, जिनमें से 5 से 7,000 फाइटर हैं, इनको रीसेटल करना था हमने वहाँ, और ये सब को पता था बड़ा मुश्किल है। TTP, a banned outfit in Pakistan, had regrouped in Afghanistan after the Taliban's takeover. Reports suggest the banned outfit has also renewed attacks in the region after breaking the ceasefire in late 2022. Pakistan saw as many as 376 terror attacks in the last year alone. A majority of these attacks were claimed by banned terror outfits such as TTP, Daesh and the Balochistan Liberation Army. More on news from Pakistan. The World Bank on Tuesday slashed Pakistan's economic growth by half from 4% to 2%. Pakistan's consumer price inflation was also estimated to have reached 24.5% in December on an annual basis, coming off as the highest rate since the 1970s. The World Bank on Tuesday slashed Pakistan's economic growth by half from 4% to 2% for the current fiscal year, owing to devastating floods in the country and slowdown in growth rate. In a report, the lender said the colossal flooding which occurred last year is likely to have seriously damaged agricultural production which accounts for 23% of GDP and 37% of employment and pushed between 5.8 and 9 million people into poverty. Pakistan, with low foreign exchange reserves and rising sovereign risk, saw its currency depreciate by 14% between June and December and its country risk premium rise by 15 percentages. Pakistan's consumer price inflation reached 24.5% in December on an annual basis recently coming off its highest rate since the 1970s, the report states. Pakistan's economic situation is precarious with large fiscal and current account deficits. The flooding last September displaced some 8 million people and killed 1,700. The South Asian nation this week co-organized a donor summit with the United Nations for Flood Reconstruction, which witnessed international donors pledging over 9 billion US dollars. The director of the US National Counterterrorism Center, Christine Abized, has said that the succession of Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zwahiri remains unclear after his death in a US raid last year. She further added that among the remaining Al-Qaeda veterans are several Iran-based senior leaders who probably continue to provide ideological and strategic guidance to the global network. The director of the U.S. National Counterterrorism Center, Christine Abizaid, said on Tuesday that the succession of Al-Qaeda leader, Eman al-Zwahiri, who was believed to have been killed in a U.S. raid last year, remains unclear. U.S. President Joe Biden confirmed last August that Zwahiri was killed in a U.S. strike in Afghanistan, the biggest blow to the militant group since its founder Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011. In an event, Christine said that among the remaining Al-Qaeda veterans are several Iran-based senior leaders.
most notably Saif al Adil and Abd al Rahman al Maghribi, who probably continue to provide ideological and strategic guidance to the global network. And yes, the best candidates are Saif al Adil and Abd al Rahman al Maghribi that are sitting in Iran. Um, what does Al Qaeda think about that? How does the network respond to the fact that those leaders um, are there and almost certainly with the knowledge of the Iranian government? And what does that mean for their credibility? What does that mean for their ability to lead um, a very diverse organization? A key 9-11 plotter, Zwahiri was reported to be living in Pakistan till the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in 2021. The Taliban has denied that Zwahiri was present in Kabul and killed in the US air strike last July. Sri Lanka's power minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said on Tuesday that the government will call for an expression of interest from investors in a new oil refinery in the southern town of Hambantota. This comes as the crisis hit island nation has to put it massively in debt public finances in order to unlock 2.9 billion dollars IMF bailout. Sri Lanka will call for an expression of interest from investors in a new oil refinery in the southern town of Hambantota. Power Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara said on Tuesday. The decision was made by the government's cabinet. Vijayasekara wrote on Twitter as the island nation takes measures to tackle energy crisis. Hambantota is also the site of a Chinese built port. Sri Lanka is struggling under its worst financial crisis in 7 decades and has to put its massively indebted public finances in order to unlock a 2.9 billion US dollars IMF loan that was agreed in September. The cabinet on Monday also approved new electricity tariffs to reflect the cost of coal and power generation to take effect this month which a sekra said without saying how much higher they would be Sri Lanka has a state run power monopoly the Ceylon Electricity Board which has incurred massive losses the government has committed to increasing power prices to reduce losses and put public finances on a sounder footing Nepal on Wednesday observed National Unification Day which marks the birth anniversary of the late king Prithvi Narayan Shah as he united the Himalayan nation which was earlier divided into factions and small states. Nepal on Wednesday observed National Unification Day or National Unity Day which marks the birth anniversary of the late king Prithvi Narayan Shah. who is also recognized as the founder of unified nepal as he integrated the himalayan nation which was divided into factions and small states hundreds of pro monarchy supporters gathered in front of the singha darbar to mark the occasion with president vidya devi bhandari paying tributes to the late king statue on his 301st birth anniversary even after the promulgation of the republican constitution in 2015 calls to commemorate the shah's contribution grew louder which in 2018 made the president begin attending the event in front of his statue nan sa rashtra ko pratik hununcha rashtriya ekata ko pratik hununcha wahan le nai yo arjo ko mulk ko 24 22 bibhinna tukra ma bibhajan bhayeko rajya lai eutai sutra ma euta mul dharma leuni jun karya wahan le garnu bhako cha tes karan le yo wahan ko dm ko karan le pani hami le wahan lai chai manaunu parcha samjhaunu parcha bhanne hamro manyata ho With the political change in 2006 and the subsequent abolition of the 239-year-old monarchy, the tradition of grand celebrations on Prithvi Jayanti discontinued. The newly formed government of Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dehl earlier this week decided to give a public holiday on the occasion. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom newsline and follow us on Twitter at newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.